Now, your host, Jennifer Firo and Ben Shields. An exciting ball game for the Marble Falls Mustangs this past Friday night against Vista Ridge. Sets up another big ball game against the Dripping Springs Tigers. We'll get more on the Dripping Springs Tigers here in just a little bit, but let's talk about that big 45-41 victory with the Marble Falls Mustangs. We've got Coach Todd Dodge and Coach, a victory that your, your team needed. Oh, absolutely. Uh, ben, it was, you know, as we talked about last week, we're, we've kind of gotten ourselves into a, a three-game schedule uh, the last three weeks of the season with uh, three other teams and four including us that are all vying for the last playoff spot. And last week against Vista Ridge was, you know, for all intents and purposes, uh, you know, high school playoff football came to Marble Falls, Texas last week because uh, the atmosphere, the stakes uh, were high. Uh, both teams uh, needed a win, and boy, I tell you what, it was a group of Texas high school football players that went after each other. And you know, as I told, you know, uh, Coach Vincent after the game, I said, "You got to be very, very proud of your team, the way they fought." I know we definitely are of ours. Um, you know, at some point in the in the making of a program, you know, a group of, of young men have got to go get what they want. Uh, you know, and you know, it seems like we've said it before. You know, there's certain things. You know, people tell me, tell us, like, "Boy, y'all deserve to win. You deserve to win." Well. You know, that might be true, but there's nothing about deserving in the game of football. It's about going out and earning it. And our players went out and earned a victory last Friday night. And and and, um, and they wanted to do this for our town. You know, I, it, this town of Marble Falls is very important uh, to this football team and representing it in, in a positive way. Coach, I had a chance to catch you and the boys after the game, after they came out of the locker room, and just the joy that they had in seeing so many of the fans waiting for you at the field house. Can you talk about that scene and what that meant to you as the head coach to see the fans and the, the players express so much joy together? Well, it's, you know, as we've talked about before, when, when you grind after these wins, you know, these, these young men work awfully hard. They get to the field house at 645 usually every morning. They don't leave till, you know, after 7 o'clock. Uh, so they're putting in 12 and 13 hour days and they're going, in, they're going to school in between that. Uh, you know, so they're really, you know, kind of have two full time jobs right now. They, they, they're students and then they're football players. And so there's a lot on their plate. and, and you know, when you lose a game, as, as we, you know, some of the ones that we've lost in the two previous weeks where we just fought our tails off and, and came up short, it's just agonizing. I mean, it absolutely, it just punches you in the gut. And um, when you go out and get one, uh, it's just the flip of that. It, the, the, the feeling is awesome. And um, you know, so, yeah, I was so happy for our players. We went in and talked about it a little bit, and then I turned them loose to go, go visit with the, with the fans and everything, and it, it was really a neat city. We really appreciate the support that our fans gave us. Coach, we also had a chance really to talk a little bit about the going into this game. You called it a must win. Now that you've gotten that must win, how do you keep the boys focused and their drive now? Because the last two weeks are equally important. I mean, you got to have the first one. Now you got to have the next two. Absolutely. You know, it's, you know, I mean, it's the, the one really, uh, you know, kind of awesome thing that's happened in our program right now is our players are buying in. You know, it's, it's a really a good feeling around our field house. They're all in. Um, they uh, they are allowing the coaching staff to lead this team and 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 and, uh, and tell them the things that are important and they're buying into the things that are important and doing the things it takes to win and do winning things. And um, now you know we go uh, into Dripping Springs this this Friday night in a, in a really a nice high school rivalry. These two towns have been playing each other for a long time, know each other well. And uh, this is a hugely important game because, um, in, you know, in, in, our, in our world of football, it's all about what have you done for me lately. And uh, our, our players understand. They're starting to understand that. And it wasn't hard bringing them back down to earth. And, you know, we've had two weeks of practice. I mean, excuse me, two days of practice this week. Um, and, uh, and really have had good work. And, and it's been spirited and uh, it's been focused. And... Um, you know, we're, we want to make sure that we don't wish away the preparation right now. I think that's very, very important that they understand that you play well and you go after wins because of the preparation. You were talking about the two heartbreaking losses the two weeks before. What would you say that the team learned from those two losses that helped them finish it against Vista Ridge? Well, you just said it, finish. You know, in, in both situations, it's a, it was about finishing. Um, against Rouse, it was about staying focused and not shooting yourself in the foot 
uh, giving yourself an opportunity because we we played the the effort, the desire, everything against Rouse. A very good football team was there. We just didn't play well enough down, you know, throughout. We kind of, you know, put ourselves in some bad situations. Um, then against uh, against uh, Vandegrift, it was a situation where, you know, defensively we played the very best game of the year, and then. You know, it was disappointing from an offensive standpoint. Played well at times, you know, but uh, just couldn't get the key, uh, you know, moving the chains in, in critical situation that and kept, you know, put our – so those are the things that we learned and, and the things that we did. You know, last uh, Friday night against Vista Ridge, you know, defensively was not our best overall effort. But in, in the key times of the ball game, it was. I mean, and it doesn't matter. You know, they don't ask you about what happened in the first – 15 minutes they ask you what happened over the whole body of work the 48 minutes and and I'm sure we'll talk about it in a little bit but we had some some guys really step up that may have not as played as well as they can early in the ball game stepped up made crucial plays late coach I know you're a very goal oriented individual and emphasize a lot of goals with your team can you go over some of the goals that the guys accomplished on Friday well I want to I want to share with our listeners what we're trying to get done and I'm going to share from a defensive standpoint what we got done against Van uh, against Vandegrift a, a team that in the Harris rating is, is ranked uh, in the top 20 in the state right now you know, we, we want to – first of all, we want to win. That's the most important. We want to allow 14 points or less. We didn't get that. We want to allow 150 yards or pass less uh, in a game. We uh, we kept Vandegrift 106. We want to keep them to under uh, 200 yards rushing. We had uh, right at 200, so we got that goal. Forced two turnovers, we did. Uh, forced th- uh, six, three, uh, four three and outs, we forced six. Uh, forced five or more punts, we forced six. And then win 50% or more of, of, the, of the snaps on third down, and we, and we had 83%. So everything that I just mentioned is key. And if you do those things, you're going to win ball games. You know, is, is, you, you know, that, and that's the thing that our players have to understand, as we've talked about before on this show, is that we don't just put up a goal board in the field house just to say we had a goal board, you know, and to, to look pretty and all that kind of stuff. To, you know, it, it, it's what we live by. And, and our kids in our program last year had no clue, you know, I just did not ever buy into what, the, you know, this year they are. Offensively, you know, as we go through the last Friday night against Vista Ridge, it was as close to getting 11-11 of a goals as, as maybe I've ever been. I'm talking about all the way back to South Lake Carroll days. You know, we were two plays short of hitting all 11 goals. Uh, last week, uh, we won, most important. We had 90% unit grade. Uh, so for the teachers out there, you know, we made an A. You know, our, our team collectively, all 11 of them together, made an A on offense. We scored on the first possession. Uh, we we uh, we want to have no turnovers. We had one turnover. We want to have no three and outs. We had one. Uh, we have no drive stop by penalty. We did not have a drive stop by penalty. Uh, we want to score 100% in the red zone when you cross the 20 yard line. We did. Uh, we want to score after a turnover. We did. We would have no sacks. You know, we did not give up a sack against a team that had um, a big-time pass rusher in Micah Thomas, you know, who's going to Arkansas State. Uh, and then 10-plus pins or RBIs, and we did. So we literally were a fumble, which was the one turnover we had, and a missed route, which would have moved the chains on another third down from getting all 11 goals. We were literally two plays. In 75 plays, there were two of them. And so I was really proud of the way that the offense is what we had to do. We had to answer the bell because the week before, we just weren't as efficient as we we're used to being. Definitely a lot of offense in that ball game for the Mustangs. And coming up, we'll have highlights from all that offense from the previous game. It was a 45-41 victory for the Marble Falls Mustangs. Again, you can catch us on KBay 103.9 and Northland Channel 15. The Coach Todd Dodd Show is brought to you by Discount Beds and More. Big thanks to Discount Beds and More for making this show possible. Matter of fact, James from Discount Beds and More is here in the studio this evening. You're invited to come on out and watch a show at the KBay Studios 1007 Avenue K. Now, back to the Coach Todd Dodd Show on KBay 103.9. Here's Ben Shields and Jennifer Fierro. 
We appreciate you tuning in not only on K-Bay, but also North One Channel 15. We appreciate Coach Todd Dodge taking the time out each and every Tuesday and chatting with us and a, a great ball game to talk about. A victory, victory for the Mustangs, 45-41, and the playoff hopes stay alive for the Mustangs. Again, the Mustangs had a very hot start last Friday night, and here it begins. Four receivers on first down and 10 at the Vista Ridge 21. Drum to the left of Wooten. Wooten has a snap to throw. He's got pressure. Throw down the middle of the field. Gray makes a nice catch as he goes up for in the end zone. Touchdown, Mustangs. A nice opening drive. They go 70-plus yards with 7.48 to go on the opening quarter. The Mustangs lead 6 to nothing. a 21-yard strike. That's Wooten to Gray. First of many big plays for Garrett. Well, in that situation, and part of our game plan was to move him around. Uh, you know, normally he lines up as our Z receiver, which is on our right side. We've moved him, you know, to the number two receiver on trips, the number three receiver on trips. Uh, we've moved him to the slot in, on that particular touchdown. Um, we moved him into the slot. We ran our four vertical. Um, great protection by our offensive line, and and they were in a too high safety look and. And he, he climbed up on the safety, stuck his foot in the ground, crossed the face, and then Brennan just, you know, just put it on him from about, you know, about 20 yards out. And it was a great throw and catch and, and perfect protection. And the extra point was uh, blog no good. So how do you work on that, Coach? Well, uh, you know, sometimes on that situation, that was a protection problem. And uh, I think it, uh, I think that kind of got in the head of our kicker through the rest of the night. And he kind of got the yips a little bit. But fortunately, we have a couple of guys that can can kick extra points and, and field goals. And and uh, as we went through the game, we were able to go in a different direction, kind of get that uh, get that short up. And you know, um, you know, Marcus has done a nice job all year. It was it was it was a tough night for him. And fortunately, uh, Alejandro came in and, and made some of the ones late. And uh, you know, and sometimes when people are, are struggling and teammates have to pick them up and we were able to score enough touchdowns for the, the, the extra points not to be a problem at the end of the game. The Mustangs defense, they come up with a huge stop. They stuff the Vista Ridge Rangers on fourth down, get the ball back on the turnover on downs, and they waste no time in scoring again. Second down and six at the Vista Ridge 20. Ball back to Wooten to throw. Again, has a nice pocket. He's looking. Fires downfield. McCannon has it. Runs into the end zone. Touchdown. Wooten to Buchanan, 20 yards, and the Mustangs have a nice 54-yard drive. Zuri keeps on going as a football player. Well, he does, you know, and people really don't realize, you know, I think we mentioned um, Carson Bowen a few weeks ago against Cedar Park, and Carson played, you know, over 120 snaps. Uh, Zuri played right, he, 117 snaps the other night. That's just unbelievable. I mean, he's starting at middle linebacker and slot receiver, and very, very few times does he get a breather, and he just he keeps playing. That particular throw and catch, again, a nice job protection by the offensive line. Uh, great job, a great read by our young quarterback. They, you know, we're, eight, we're starting to able to take advantage of people doubling Garrett. We were in three by one away from Garrett. They doubled him to the single receiver side, which opened up the middle of the field. Uh, Zuri ran a great route, and, and, uh, and Brennan put it on him. All right, so the Vista Ridge Rangers, they come back and score 14 points. It's 14-13, but the Mustangs come right back and regain the lead. Here's a couple of plays that helped out. Third down and 27, Woot looking to throw. Finds nothing downfield. Now he fires for J.T. Watson. He's got it at the 10. He's knocked down to the 6-yard line, and that's going to be a gain of 38 yards, and that's going to be Wooten to Watson. And he'll be back in the shotgun formation again with Jerome and Buchanan. Does he hand it off this time? Snap to Gray. It's a high snap. He bobbles it. Goes forward. Touchdown. He handles the snap, stays focused, goes forward, and the Mustangs reclaim the lead after that 2-yard run by Garrett Gray. Third time he has taken the direct snap. It's now 19-14, Marble Falls. With New wrinkle for your offense coach, Garrett Gray line up in the Wildcat formation. Well, we call it the wild horse, and uh, it uh, is uh, – everybody seems to have their own <laughs> little spin, you know, through football, and it's our wild horse. And, uh, no, we've been working on that even from the spring, and it's been one of those deals that uh, it's it was time. You know, we've gotten ourselves into into where, you know, as we said, we're, our, our three games – the last three games is for the playoffs. And so it was time to break it out uh, the other night, and I'm sure we'll continue to see him because he's he's a very effective in that in that role. 
you know, I wanted to you know, mention, you know, this morning came out in Austin American Statesman that uh, Garrett was the uh, the Central Texas Player of the Week, the Austin American States Player of the Week. He had, you know, three touchdown catches. He had a rushing touchdown and then a kickoff return. I'm sure you all going to highlight here in a minute. <laughs> oh, yes, uh, Garrett with a nice kickoff return for the Marble Falls Mustangs. Uh, let's talk about J.T. Watson. Uh, that's been a couple – there was a couple big plays for the for the Mustangs where Wooten was able to break off the, and find Watson cutting across. Well, on that – that previous drive before Garrett scored, we were in uh, we were in an empty set, and really felt like we had a, a free run at the safety with Garrett for a post route. Of course, it was a third in a bunch. You know, it was a huge, and the safety spun to the middle of the field. It really was good protection, but we didn't have a throw. Um, Brennan did a, a great job of buying some time, and then and then uh, J T broke off his route. And there were three catches. Three of the four catches that JT had the other night were ones where he broke off a route and, and we made a play in some crucial situations. And he's really, you know, becoming a very, very savvy receiver. You know, I think JT's got, you know, close to 50 catches on the year for, you know, nearly 600 yards, which is, you know, uh, sometimes gets overshadowed by, by Garrett's numbers, but he's, he's having a heck of a senior year. And you're talking about the kickoff returns, Coach Garrett takes that uh, 94 yards, and then they get a big uh, kickoff return. So I'll try to kickoff returns for touchdowns there. Yeah, well, I want to mention, you know, on that kickoff return by Garrett, uh, first of all, I sure was glad to see him kick it to him. It's something that we worked hard on. Our coaching staff worked their tails off to kind of get that sh- short up. There was a block, a double team kick out by. Uh, by Davin Manning and by James Breyer that, you know, people in, in out in, you know, in football world really don't see, but it's what sprung him, you know, for when once he got to the second level, there wasn't anybody going to catch him. But I think that that block, and I want to mention those two, James is a senior wide receiver, heck of a block. And then of course, Davin is our freshman linebacker, but they, they did exactly what they were coached to do. And, and, and uh, Garrett hit that thing on a run. All right, after they uh, trade those kickoff returns for a touchdown, Vista Ridge is up 10, but then the Mustangs able to come back and cut it to a one-possession ball game. All right, Wooten looking to throw. He's thrown for the corner of the end zone, and that one's going to be caught. Is he in bounds? He is. Touchdown, Garrett Gray in the corner. Make it 35-31, 105 to go in the third quarter. Boy, Gray in the corner able to go up for it and get it. Big catch. Going up against two defenders and, again, using his height to his advantage. Well, you know, we just – you know, you have to use a guy like that. You have to put it in his hands. You know, you have to make – take the shot. You know, it was a, it was a good read uh, by uh, by Brennan. The, the safety was late getting over because he was he was uh, occupied by JT on the front side of that thing and um, you know, put it in the back. And, of course, the big guy went up and got it and, uh, you know, and, and really, you know, loves – being in those situations where he's counted on to make big plays. Now we're starting to sound like a broken record. It's Wooten to Gray again. So Wooten has the shotgun snap, fakes the handoff. He's looking to throw. He's looking, throwing downfield for Gray. Gray gets behind his man. He's got it. Touchdown. That's Wooten to Gray. 51 yards and the Mustangs back in front. What a game. 38-35, 8.49 to go. Again, hidden deep. Yeah. Um you know his his arm has gotten so much stronger, and again, all of those that we're mentioning, it, there's a lot of Wooten to Gray, but boy, there's a lot of great protection. I mean, I'm gonna tell you right now, our young sophomore off right tackle played the game of his life, and he's been playing well. But in our in our deal, 61 production points by an offensive lineman is unbelievable. And uh, Ryan Becker had 61. He had <laughs> six. You know the little helmet stickers. You know the horseshoes we put on there, and. Uh, you know, Chase Fry, the uh, senior left guard, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize he's playing hurt right now. He's had some knee injuries. He's had some thigh injuries. And he just absolutely refuses to not practice. He refuses to out uh, games. He just – he is a tough, tough individual who's given a lot to his football team right now. So Vista Ridge, they go ahead again, and the Mustangs are down. But then here is the go-ahead drive for Marble Falls. Root in the shotgun. He has a snap, rolling to his left. He's looking. He's looking. He wants the fire downfield. Garrett Gray looking to come back for it. He's got it on the bobble. He catches it on the bobble. He was going down, juggle the ball. He's able to get it down to the four-yard line. What a play, Garrett Gray. That is incredible. That's 41 yards. Wooten to Gray, first down and goal for the Mustangs. 136 to go in this ballgame, and the Mustangs trail 41-39. 
Give, wow. give, give him a lot of credit for not uh, not breaking his concentration on that play. You know, that ball was bopping up and down. Meanwhile, they hand off to Drew, and he takes it up the gut. Touchdown, Mustangs. Touchdown, Mustangs with 127 to go in the ball game. Drone punches it through, and it's 45-41. Marble Fall stopping the clock with 127 to go. Vista Ridge will have two timeouts remaining. So your team coming through the clutch, Coach, on that drive. Well, you know, it, it, that particular play, the last one, was one that we've run um, last year against Rouse for a big touchdown. We've, we've hit it for a touchdown this year. We've hit it for another big play. It's one of our kind of our staples that we kind of keep in our back pocket. You know, our players, uh, offense players, in, you know, are really good about being coached on sideline. And that right before that series, we talked about okay, we're gonna we're gonna talk about double strong ninety, you know, backside post and you know, offensive line again, great job protection. Keith Jerome on the backside of that thing, great jo- job of protecting on the backside of that thing to make it happen. And you know, the 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 corner, bless his heart, I mean, he had a rough night number one for them, but he had the post route played perfect, and then. You know, uh, because of good protection, uh, Brennan was able to put the ball. It was almost like a back shoulder post throw, to be honest with you, and and, and put it where Garrett could go after it. And of course, he's he's phenomenal about making adjustment on the ball, and and uh, you know, and just another big play, and, and and was the difference in the ball game. You know, at that point, to to put us up 45. And then here's the big stand on fourth down, and this wins for the Mustangs. 57 seconds left in this ball game. Fourth down and 10. Here comes the play of the game by far, 45-41. You've got Snow in the shotgun. Man to his right. And he throws it out to the right, and it's incomplete. Knocked away, incomplete. That's going to be the ball game. Tyler Wright over there making the play, and that's going to be the ball game as it's a turnover on downs. Tyler Wright again coming in, knocking the pass away with 52 seconds to go so the Mustangs can take victory formation. And the play before that, Aiden Pardell made a huge hit to knock the ball loose, so two huge defensive plays in the ball game. Well, I want to mention four of them. And people, people don't, you know, it's kind of like the Burnett game when we got the uh, the two opening, you know, fumble, ret- you know, recoveries and went up 14 nothing. In that game against Vista Ridge, you, you, when a shootout happens, you forget about some of the things that happened earlier in the game. The stop on fourth down on the first possession allowed us to score. And so we started the game against Vista Ridge, you know, up two touchdowns. And that's huge And when, when it's going to end up a four-point ball game. That one. Then – Two possessions prior to uh, that last possession, we stopped them on fourth down again. A huge play on fourth down by Davin Manning over on their sideline, a big time play. Uh, then you take the on first down in that last drive, huge play by Eric Cobble, our sophomore uh, safety cornerback. Then you go Aiden Parnell on second down, and then and then on fourth down. You know, uh, Tyler Ryan, huge play. So there was a lot of guys stepping up and making plays in crucial situations on our defense. All right, so that wraps up the tons of highlights for the Marble Falls Mustangs from Friday night's ball game. When we come back, we'll look forward to the Dripping Springs Tigers. This is the Coach Todd Dodd Show on KBA 103.9 and Northland Channel 15. And it is brought to you by Discount Beds and Marble Falls. Now, once again, here's Ben Shields and Jennifer Fierro. On K Baywall 3.9 and Northland Channel 15, the Coach Todd Dodge Show. All right, Coach, so you put the big 45 41 win behind you in another must win ball game coming up uh, three nights from tonight. Yeah, all of that that great feeling and everything will be for Nod if we don't take care of business this week. And that's just where you want to be. But as I told our players after practice today, this, 365 days ago, this time last year, we weren't in the hunt. You know, I mean, we were. We were preparing to play Dripping Springs. We had a big win over Dripping Springs, but it, you know, it was not to get ourselves into the playoffs. Uh, we control our own destiny. That what more would you want? Um, we can't, you know, get hung up on what the overall record is right now. It's bottom line: is are you going to have enough wins in district? That's what we've said all along. It was going to take three, and we've got one now, and we still got two left. So we got the opportunity to go do it. So. Um, you know, we're excited, very excited about the opportunity. I'm really excited about all the fans that we're going to take to to Dripping Springs this Friday night and fill up that place. Coach Coach Schultz over at Dripping Springs, Bob Schultz, has kind of a, a background that's very similar to yours. He mm-hmm. spent some time coaching high schools, then he went to the college level and coached there, and then he returned to Dripping Springs from coaching, coaching at the University of Tulsa. Mm-hmm. What kind of advantage do you think, or advantage is not the right word, how does his knowledge help his team prepare going into this Friday night's game? Well, Bob Schultz is, uh, is 
a veteran, a guy that you'll come across in coaching. I mean, there's not a whole lot he hasn't seen. And anytime you get a chance to coach at that level, you know, your your experience level, you know, goes up quite a bit. You know, you see different looks and things like that. Uh, he's an outstanding coach. You know, really, as I've always had a lot of respect for Bob's good friend of mine. I've talked with him in the off season. I know he's very, very excited about his two quarterbacks that he had coming in this year. You know, they've got, uh, one, I think, one of the top receivers in in, in the area, and Zach Zamora. Uh, I was very impressed tonight that I got a chance to go watch them and Rouse. You know, they got a kid named uh, Eli Shelton. That's a, he's a tight end type. They don't play him attached, but he's a big body that. You know, and then they got two, you know two running backs, number two uh, Bobby Cruder and number uh, number twenty uh, Harrison Dance. That together, uh, they've rushed for about as much yards as, as as KJ has by himself. You know, they they're about you know eight hundred eight hundred fifty yards combined between the two of them. So this team is uh, you know they want to throw it, they can run it. Probably the, the the strength of their football team is a big physical offensive line. They are. In the in the same as you know the the Rouses the the very similar to Cedar Park very very big and physical up front typical twenty five four eight team yeah they really are you know they there there are some really good looking offensive lines in this league you know uh, us and and Vista probably are the smallest you know as far as overall but but this bunch is 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 very big defensively you know they've struggled at times like we have and we we know how that goes but. You know, the one thing that I think when you put these two teams together, you can, you know, pretty much throw out whatever happened, you know, before. And that's kind of the, the thing that happens in high school football. These these kids, they will be ready. You know, uh, we I know he'll have them ready, and, and our kids will be all ready also. Coach, are you saying that the – you know, because Drippy Springs comes into this game at 0-4, 2-6, you led me, lead me to believe that the record is very deceiving. I, I think anybody – that is at the bottom of the standings in this league, it's deceiving because of who you play. I mean, you could have a pretty good football team, you know, and not make it somebody in our league, you think about it, either us, Dripping Springs, Vista Ridge, or Leander is going to stay home. Well, I, I have a whole lot of respect for all four of those teams. You know, I think we're not bad. You know, we're getting better, you know. I definitely have respect for the team we were playing this week. Vista Ridge, I mean, I, I think, you know, they may have found themselves offensively the other night. They, you know, and then, of course, Leander's Leander. You know, we got them, you know, down the line. So, I mean, you have good football teams that, that, that uh, had high aspirations that's going to stay home. But it's just the, the you know, the, that's the beast that is our league. And uh, I think it makes everybody better. And it, it, it surely does once you hit the playoffs. I think there is not another league in this state that would be more battle-tested for the playoffs uh, than District 25-4A. Needless to say, very, very deep. When we come back, we've got a fan question. And we'll wrap up the Coach Todd Dodd Show, brought to you by Discount Beds and More in Marble Fall. Back to the program with Ben Shields and Jennifer Fierro. We appreciate you tuning in this evening. It is the Coach Todd Dodge Show. We're going to wrap it up. we got our fan uh, question quickly. Jody from Marble Falls. Coach, knowing that the team has to win the last two games, how do you keep them loose and from playing tight? Well, it it happened last week, you know. I mean, it's obviously something that you, you worry about with a team when, has, when they haven't been there before. That's a great question, by the way, because it's, it's a huge job of, of uh, a coach. Uh, you know, the one thing is – they know with us, myself and with my assistants, you know, there's a time that we are kind of loose with them, you know, and, and play, you know, and, and it's family atmosphere. There's other times, you know, just like in any family, it's time to get down to business, you know, and our players understand that. And uh, we talk about being wired but loose. You know, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a deal in, in, in football about being, you know, kind of that bug-eyed intensity, that wired up, but, you know, don't worry about making mistakes. Understand that your your partner beside you is going is going to he's got your back. You know, if I make a mistake, you know someone's going to pick up slack. I'm just not going to make the same mistake again. That's kind of where the way our players are playing right now. The week before, you know, we should have won that game. I really feel we should have won that game. We didn't, but uh, you know, defensively, not the defense played its best game against uh, Vandy. You know, last w- this w- last week. You know, kind of the offense had the defenses back, you know, and so that's just part of it. Now I'm ready for us to put it all together, you know, and, and that's what we need to start doing as we as we go through the next two weeks. We might see that Friday night, so we invite you to get on out to the game, and you can also catch it on KBay and KBayFM.com, 7 o'clock airtime. Coach, thank you so much for your time as always, and good luck to you on Friday. 
Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Jennifer. Y'all have a great week. It is the Coach Todd Dodd Show brought to you by Discount Beds and More in Marble Falls. Big thanks to James and Discount Beds for bringing you the Coach Todd Dodd Show. And we'll do this again next Tuesday, 7 o'clock on KBay 103.9 and Northland Channel 15. Have a great night.